Hey hello everyone, this is Hero of Marathon with the first part of the Hellenic League led by the Seleucid Empire. And um, I hope you enjoy and uh, let's start off with a battle against the, the forces. Uh, not a battle actually, a siege in a city assault. Uh, um, sorry, a fleet attack. And I'm going to do a triangle formation with having this, uh, having most of our maneuver our central ship will be our admiral we don't really have to worry about their ships actually the reason why I'm fighting is is because the others will screw me up uh, so uh, I couldn't really um, yeah I had no choice I'll say it that way because it is the hard way you might see some Massalian units and that's true yes I have converted with the Massali and it's more the expeditionaries to expand into Spain and it brings us basically up to the next level of imper uh, of um, uh, territorial expansion into the first real colony of Emesalia has been established of course when we confederated with them and the next I'm going to tell you everything what happened basically in the campaign sort of in a cinematic way doing that because the game just looks gorgeous and uh, not anyway so um, get them out of the nation I don't really need formations each side will have um, great groups and that will be all start and I should have possibly put them differently but anyway doesn't matter Dave Yeah, just some for the concert of my peaceful, because my old one, my brother and my have a one together, and the one that we have right now, he just that's why he came, is now going to, is that head has died. He goes all out all the time. You can't use him wipe out the the mod actually. I'm going to ram them from bits. I think there is no chance for them actually, <laughs> especially not because we have the. Arbic, hopefully he's going after him, I hope. Oh, they're not any attacking, right? Okay. Okay, let's form them. Let them march. march. I think I'm going to use you to just attack. Uh, we'll see what happens because I'm not sure. The rest, I think can use this one. Nice. Okay. Charge. Bomb. Bart. Use your melee capability. Yeah. I never feared actually for, for our lives here. Oh, we have been boarded. Quite a lot. Oh, that's not good. <laughs> that's not good at all. Boom! 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 Not a touch. Thank you. Oh. Okay, let's take a look because it seems like we are even odds at the moment. So, in that case, let's just... I think we can also just attack them. Although I'm not sure that... The Massilian Marines are n doing reasonable. What? The general's dead? Exhausted. Oh. What? Made no sense, actually. That, though. But, um. Uh, in theory, we should be able to win this, in fact. So, uh, let's turn around and ram the ship of the general. Let's keep ramming. Already? Nice. Our oh, general is not doing that well. Although, I'm not sure if it is being... Oh, you're not even do able to do anything, are you? You can help if you just would be able... Okay, ram it once again. And you to ram the enemy ship. We're winning that fight. That's nice. Yeah, okay. We're doing reasonable, actually. Uh, 
Okay, the Marines archers are really pumping ass. In fact, so <sighs> really a big roll this. In fact, so that is quite nice to see. Okay, continue the fight. I'm not sure what we will have. Just charge them once again. Okay, continue fighting. Oh, no, yes, continue the fight. Actually, I don't mind that. Have you destroyed it? Yes, nice. Destroyed. Destroyed them well. Ram it once again. One more time. That will be able to do the finishing throws. Fire damage or not the most important thing. Just to ram it once again. And we lost no units in the process, so we did well. Well enough. Hold the fire. Hold fire. Thank you. Um, is that all? Hold your fire, you idiots. You're firing at all your own men. Hold. Okay, that's just, just one charge will be enough, I think. Oh, was that all? No, we have one left. Alright, that would be it. Alright, a decisive victory. I agree. We lost not of the old factions. Do you have the ones of the um yeah the optimus <laughs> sorry I'm going I'm possibly easy to replace it with this option is. Alright come on. Let's enslave the population. You could see the uh Alright, that is how our Seleucid domain, the Seleucid dynasty, or we're going to call them the Popularis faction and the loyal list to the Hellenic League and the basically the leaders of the factions. Of course, then we have the Antony Sotrino, the leader of the Seleucid faction. We got Palaros, that was the old leader of the Pergamon that joined was the first one to join the Hellenic League. And Tergisterius will possibly succeed his father as the leading role. We got the Zenon as the next leader of the uh, Massalian faction. That was also he joined when he saw that the Messalians could help him fight. He first became a client state, later he asked for joining of the Hellenic League. And that was very profitable because his faction basically expanded into Provincia, controlling all of those all of those regions, and also gaining some extra um, even an extra rank for himself. And the Estab Estabia was the one that was joining has come from the Colchis. The Colchis joined as well after being uh, fighting the war with the Seleucids uh, and fearing of the destruction of his own people. He's decided to join the Hellenic League and he also was asked by Antoscus to join the Royal List of the support of the joining uh, joining of the factions. And after that we have Europees. That was one of the... Um, yeah, he is one of... He is the governor of... Uh, M he is the governor of Media Maga, and he is the one that has the most, basically, governing skills of them all, and has been really the political leader of this faction, partly with an alliance with Atsuko Sotoris that he established over the times. Euclides came to support by the Macedonians and called himself the next Macedonian king. Of course, but on a later date he joined the Seleucus and became the support of the Seleucid by Macedon. Euclid himself um, is being the governor of of the um, the Galatian support and he has been educating and also leading the faction from Syria and going to the council meeting in Syria and from the Hellenic League or time to time to talk about politics with the other families. And we also have Idiros. He is the admiral in the region of. Uh, he was not just the admiral of the. Uh, um, he also joined the Hellenic League when he was uh, basically with the Massalian and Septon Zenon's offer as well to join him with the Antonius uh, faction. You also get Amplius. He was just promoted by uh, by Antonius by leading the fleet of the Seleucid, calling him the Vanguard fleet. I think. We're going to take a look at all the faction, of course, and all the armies that we have. That are also supported by, of course, we got him. While joining, we also not just have started a war with Rome. 
what has been going on for just a while. I just been started. We also got the Hellenic Vanguard, which has been joined by Astrogenicus, uh, especially the main army of the League. The Vanguards, we got the support of the Rhodos. I'm just basically saying it because they are basically the main part of that region and they have been also by the Rhodos leaders. He also joined, but he never. I'm not sure if he joined. No, he never joined the, um, the support of the big royal factions, although Antagonist is still wanting to let him join the League to make sure the most of the supporters of the other factions are in that part. We also get Lahabasin, that is one of the... Um, he was a Jew in the past, in the per in previous life, and now also he joined uh, at some point the Hellenic uh, the Seleucid faction, at some point, and now he's the leader of the other families. He also commands the uh, Jujin support and is now finally going on his long line quest by the support of the um, and previous lord of the Caucasus faction and joining him on a conquest to the Malacca at Saba. And I'm going to possibly do that in cinematic mode. Yeah, he's now um, going after the. Uh, he's now going to resupply, and then we go after the settlement uh, down here. But I'm not really sure what his name is. Idhameon is the um, is the one. So uh, he is the Jujain. I also have basically Jujain sources and Jujain and Arbarian support. They have. Uh, yeah, you can see he was a Caucasus, but uh, he joined the at Empire as well at the point that Caucasus joined after the losing the war decisively and didn't want his destruction of his own people. Finally, returning to Jerusalem, he established the Jain Abarian support for the Hellenic League and also, of course, gaining support by having Arabian troops and Arabian levies, also having Lip Ahalos joining them, and also, of course, Arabian camel archers. And of course, yeah, Greek slingers. I'm just getting. I got to Greek slingers, especially because I have more um, uh, ammunition. I'm just going to do them. Going to call them Jewish Let's say I also recruited them in the settlement of Petra. And we also have the massive trade. But I'm more. I want to continue talking about every one of the characters. We also have Cleonides. There was the Massalian. He is basically the leader of the vanguard of the West. And what it is calling, he is basically establishing a new army in the west to take on the barbarian factions and also support Senan in his conquest of Spain. He is now recruiting one in Massalia because he also wants to help defend Massalia against the Romans. Or have just started a war is because we wanted to reunite Macedonia under our control. The Romans have been too insulted as well. And we also have been having one political injury. A uh, political action what killed off some of the leaders of the old league by sending them into a diplomatic mission with Tylus, although they were slaughtered uh, in those things because we also already declared war on them, but the, the diplo diplomats were there to ask for some treaties and all that, but not knowing that we declared war, the Tylus slaughtered them, but also was the attention of antagonists. That was a long time ago, and also one of the great leaders of Aperos was killed and basically wiping out the Aperos support in that manner uh, at that time. But at that time, that's one of the things that happened as well. We also got the Vanguard of the East. That is the one of the last generals of the royal dynasty, and that is the one of that is in Babylonia, Gergonius, and he is landing the leading the um, Seleucid. Uh, I'm not sure if this is look at or it is the vanguard of the east. Yeah, he is the vanguard of the east, and he is basically the um, yeah the vanguard of the east that guards the east against uh, any enemy factions. And he is basically now joining up with Antigonus to first start the war with Parthia. And I was uh, counting on to attack this settlement, but uh, Antigonus, you can see that. And I'm also using the 12 turns per year mod, but it's really quite nice um, because you really have to sometimes count on that you can't basically attack in the summer because it will really kill your troops off. But I'm not doing that because it was not summer when the time I arrived. So, and I, I was counting on that we just would have one turn. And but like in winter, you really have to take take on like factions. 
and we also have a really big supply of centropes and client states the Lugios uh, joined our client state ship basically been becoming a buffer against the eastern stripes of Europe the Gauls and all that the Germans and he's now a trusted ally of us and um, we also now of course going after the Malakat Tan Sap because they have been really declaring war against our traverse of Haga that has been called back because we ca captured the original center of Haga at some point but now we're finally going to um, make their end uh, with the June Dean support hopefully he can do it although we'll see I'm not sure but we'll see if he can do it and we also have an alliance with the Comanchians that joined us as puppet state after being offered trade and of course protection against the Carvadinians and the Massalians were at some point the same with trading but they have been taken out by the Carvadinians and I'm also now planning a war against them because I'm also sending armies to Libya um, to uh, go there and seek to, uh, to seek the support of the uh, support our allies in the war, and we also have been in, in line with the Catilia, but are also a client state, and we have m s numerous armies. Actually, I can't even say you how much we have. Um, I think ten of them are already governors somewhere, so if like, we have thirteen armies or something, but it has been really a push to get, <laughs> actually. And it has been a really long time already. I think we are almost at a hundred turns, so we will have to reform some of the Torax swords that I really would like to get. And now it's basically spanning the last one of the economic tree. And you you might be surprised, surprise, I don't have any kind of empire maintenance because I've really all my governors have these like like this governor what I've been mostly spending on is Empire Minute Tage man and also there's they, they just have so much buff that they have been basically grinding the forty percent down to zero. So we really have all the money that we can get of every province, so that's quite nice. And also of course been spending on technology that has been really profitable. And I'm really on my first time that I've been really spending on Research rate, getting that up. Uh, I've never done that before, actually. I never really did that because I really didn't find the profitable. But now I'm seeing that I really pay dividends because I really have a nice big economic power. Although the last season we really have been seeing that our military expansion has been taking hard tread on the treasury. I'm not able to get a normal taxes, but I don't really mind that actually because at the moment we are. Like 65 income, <laughs> 55,000 is the armor upkeep. That's basically insanity. But um, yeah, like these guys, they're already commanding. I'm not sure how you can see how much they like cost, but they're really quite high. And I also mostly recommend what I have done in the uh, past of the Romans is the pattern of military. Is you really have to go and get down to the highest level because it really will decrease your upkeep cost and it really helps you. Like, they don't have, we have that yet, but when we have that with them, it really will decrease our upkeep costs. Uh, by quite a lot. And also, also recommend when you can raid, raid, because it really also decreases your uh, upkeep cost by quite some margin. Like 20% or something. Yeah, 20% of your upkeep cost. And the EI, it really wants to make it hard on you with upkeep cost. Like 180, 40, 130. Uh, especially cavalry and elephant units and uh, really elite units are really quite expensive. Especially the mercenaries are also quite expensive. Like now we have the support of Egypt, the Egyptians. And I've just been for mostly narrative let's play and... Um, or mostly to storytelling, just mean getting some mercenary Egyptian band or yeah, uh, just assortment to basically make them our um, Egyptian support. And we also have to cross out rebellion here, so we're going to do that. Or it won't be too difficult, I think. No, we're going to destroy them. And repel us in Karenia. I think this one is really the ones of most unstable problems that I have gotten, yes. And yeah, but now you're almost stable, so that's quite nice. And we of course also have the Libyan support. Uh yeah, the reason I am just getting these very high mercenaries is just because of the storytelling support, just support of Libya and the Viapic called Karini and so we have those are supporters. And I don't have to get title these armies because they it isn't really needed. 
in, in really, but uh, this is for storing telling purposes, and I like that. And he's, of course, the head of fleets, and he's basically the main fleet. I always recommend getting these guys. They basically OP unit because they have an artillery with a missile damage of nine. Ha what? How am I high? Missile damage? Uh, am I seeing that correct? How high? Wait a second. I have not seen that before. Mm. Ninety-six thousand. How high is for the Pelopolis? I'm interested now because it seems to be incredible. Uh, Philippolos, where is that? We, which one has it? I think And Terry Costillos has one. Yeah. Okay, that is a whole lot. Whoa! Oh yeah, of course, I forgot that. Yeah, I got the uh, one that sees overall, but the shots are really inaccurate, but the damage that they will do is very high, so in theory, let's say you do one damage to one thing, it will really break down quite a lot of the hit points. And so, you should really, if you want to go to DEI, let's go for the Filopio ships because they also have Greek Marines. They have, uh, they have a big ship. They will be able to ram. They will be able to fight. They will be fire on the ships, and then I will also would ferry it out with some fire tarries and persuade Thermohelimia. Sorry, I'm not going to pronounce that right. Also, Greek Marine archers, getting some of them, and also some supply ships to supply your ships and navies. And also then you will be able to, of course, supply your own armies if need be. If you're not able to recruit though, just go for a main line of assault, try race or, or the other one. Doesn't really matter. With some, of course, Greek Marine Archers. Uh, that's mostly what I would do. If you don't have the available stone thrower ships. Uh, what we have to do more is go and attack Tarragonis, what will be easy, I think. Then I will possibly able to out resolve this. Although I am very wrong, that is not good. Okay, it seems that we will be able to fight. We should be waiting then. Alright, then I will wait. I don't really matter care. Too much will wait. Two turns waiting. So we can get some uh, maybe reinforcements, but I'm possibly going to leave him there to support our armies. And now we're going to camp a minute and go for this one. And we still have to get him some cool trades. Wise man, faction raid, events attacks. I think this one is quite nice, yeah. Let's get that one. Um we do have to miss say more. Yeah. Uh, we have here the support of the Apres. Yeah, the support of Apres has been returning uh, with one general, and I think I'm going to rename this because this is not good. <laughs> I forgot to rename. Sorry. Um, how are we going to say this? Um, um, yeah, the um, hmm, the Seleucid elites. The Seleuc. Go night elites elite elite die elites. Yeah. And of course like as Athens has also general, I'm not going to governor, I'm going to Council of Athena and we also have the same thing here in um in Masali you have the council of Masali. So this is basically how it's been with the um Seleucid uh, the Hellenic League, and called by the Seleucid dynasty, uh, with Antokinos shooter at his head, at the head of the political ladder, and we really are now trying to try and gain total dominance in the court, because we really want that instead, because it's, um, what I already said with um, this one, is that when you're a republic, you only want to be here or something, because that will mostly give you normal stats. Or oh, like the Carthaginians have that the same with Athens and uh, Pergamon. But when when you have the uh, when you have a dynasty, or like now we have the Hellenic League, that is the Popularis, we are the Popularis, and we have the Optimus, and we are the um, that faction that really wants to take Peerless because we want the most of our dominance, because it really gives us buffs all over the place. What I really want. 
And what I also would recommand is going, if you have some point to have a really nice purple lord in all your towns, uh, let's go, just go and tax rate the highest income. Because it really will buff off your own um, own infrastructure enables you to build much. Because I really mean seeing that happening to me. Because uh, when I did that, I really was gaining ground over everywhere, and I was able to recruit armies everywhere. And even with the normal taxes on now, is that no longer no longer the case for some reason? I don't know why that is. Ah, I know why that is because I'm being breaking trade with Roman Carthage and Parthia, but what? Well, because together they were around gaining me around three thousand or something. So. Like these settlements, um, some of them that are no longer, yeah, they fall down, so that is not too high. I found myself to be interesting. Um, we also got something, yeah, maybe Nabatia, but yeah, a tree is not really that big of a problem, so I'm not that first of doing it. So, um, that was all, I think. I like we also have the support of Carmira. He was the leader of the Carmiras. We also got some old Bosporan, yeah, Bosporan also from Carmira, Bosporan cavalry to companions, and we also have Bosporan Hick horse archers and a few more in that group, Ponting archers. Just uh, yeah, to map up. And we also have the trading monopoly of the Hai Hastan. I almost have all the. Um, I almost have all the trade rules, the only one I don't have is gold, so there is a chance that the conquest of um, uh, Ethiopia will be at the doorstep very soon. So if you want to see more of the Hellenic League controlled by the Seleucid Empire, I hope you enjoy, thanks for watching and I will see you all in the next one. So uh, leave a like if you want to see more or uh, give a comment to uh, show your interest and uh, I will see you on the next one.